Hey there, welcome to Transformative Principle. Just want to let you know that it is time for the Transformative Leadership Summit. That is the annual conference that I put on that is uh, just amazing. This year, our theme is empowerment. We're going to be talking about how to empower yourself and how to empower teachers, how to empower students, and how to empower parents and community leaders. It is going to be fantastic, and I hope that you enjoy it. Please go to transformativeleadershipsummit.com, and you can check that out. You can sign up for your free ticket, and it's going to be a fantastic conference this year that you are going to love. Thank you to our sponsor, Can Do You. Can Do You helps busy principals create the school culture they've always dreamed of through motivational speeches, engaging videos, and leadership camps that are packaged together for schools that want to see real change. Go to candoyou.us slash Jethro to schedule your call today. And if you sign up before the end of the summer, you'll receive a big, huge TV for your lobby to recognize all the amazing things that your students are doing every single day. That's Can Do You. C A N D O, the letter U dot U S slash Jethro. My name is Jennifer Krong from the Assist Learning Podcast. I'm a proud member of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of the individual hosts. Make sure you check out all the other great podcasts at EDU Podcast Network dot com. And get ready because the learning begins in three, two, one. Welcome to Transformative Principle. This week, I'm going to continue my conversation with Amy McDonald about Flight Club and creating webs of support and how we can help them. And I hope that you enjoy this. I really enjoyed my conversation with Amy and the things that they do with kids are really powerful. So enjoy the rest of this conversation. Okay, and welcome back. And I am talking with Amy McDonald. Thank you for listening to Transformative Principle. And Amy, thank you so much for being part of this and helping us learn more about Kaleidoscope Connects uh, Flight School and the way that you guys uh, help build supports in kids. And and before we talked about the story that you tell uh, using the acronym Roy G. Biv, so I encourage everybody to go back and listen to that if you haven't and check that out. And uh, that's at transformativeprinciple.org and just search for Amy McDonald and you'll be able to find that. So Amy, we talked about each of the strings and the anchors and the balloons. And when you talk about the balloon, that is the, the child, that refers to them uh, landing on a web of supports and not falling through that web. Is that a good way to visualize what you're talking about? Yeah, it's a great way. And and to keep in mind that it's kind of the teenager's job to push through those cracks sometimes, right? And that we, that's, right. <laughs> that's, that's what's happening in their brains, right? That whole remodeling idea. And that we, that the goal is for the teenagers to have a strong enough web that they have supports to push them right back up through it. You know, there's a reason it's not a piece of plywood. Teenagers push through. So to have those supports that they can come right back up on top of their web after they fall through or push through. <laughs> that seems like a duh kind of thing, but it's it's important for those things to be in place because it's yeah. it's so easy for kids to to fall through. Yeah. So you you mentioned before that you take this survey at flight school. Can you talk a little bit about what that survey entails and and what you find out? Yeah, for sure. So we call the survey the student support card. And when we're talking to people about it, we kind of refer to it as the other side of the report card. The survey takes, there's a survey for each of the colors, Reggie Biv. Some of the colors have a couple of extra surveys in them, like the green one has a um, couple of extra surveys in it. So the kids at flight school, at flight club, we go in and we do activities and we learn about red. We do some pre-survey activities in is a large group, and then they go in and we have, um, they can either do it on their computers or they can do them on um, tablets or their phones, whatever device they want to use. And they log in, it's theirs personal. They have their own um, login and password. And um, we're pretty clear with them that nobody else sees it unless they give somebody else permission to see it. So after we do red, do the pre-survey activities, they go in and they take a red survey, which it asks them to identify people who are anchors in their lives. So they might say, 
my mom is an anchor. She's my mom. And then there's 10 statements and they check whichever statements apply to their mom. And that those 10 statements then determine the proximity of that anchor. So we talk about anchors being caring, therefore near to and tight with. And the tighter your anchor is, obviously, the closer your connection is, right? That doesn't mean that all of your anchors need to be tight. Anchors can be therefore near to also. And, and they're still just as, you know, much of an anchor. So the, each of the colors have these surveys that they take. And when they're finished with them all, they get what we call a kaleidoscope snapshot. And it's basically a, a bar graph, but it's in a circle. And it shows their colors. So if they have 50% red, there's calculations on the backside, you know, that figure out the calculations, then the, the bar for red would be halfway around the circle. If they have 30% orange, it would be 30, a third of the way around and so forth. So they see this kaleidoscope snapshot at the end. And we have what we call full color dialogue, where we use very strength-based questions to talk to them. We focus on their strongest colors first. So if they have really strong red, but their social norms, their violet is really small, we don't even address violet right away. We just start, we talk about red and who their anchors are and why their anchors are, why they are their anchors. The idea is that the tighter connected you are with students, the more appropriate it would be for you to talk about the colors that are less strong in their kaleidoscope snapshot. So that becomes a, a probably a conversation later, right? If that student chose to show their anchor, their snapshot. The other thing that happens in the student support card is um, at the end, after they've done all the surveys, uh, there's a it's programmed so that their three top colors come up and there's some activities that they do, some questions they answer, some data they input based on those three colors. And the result of that is what we call their focus declaration. It's kind of a mission building. It's a mission building statement process. So in the end, they come out with this, we call focus declaration that talks about the kind of person that they want to be. And at the end, they can email it to themselves or email it to one of their anchors or to their teachers or whoever, so that they can share that focus declaration with um, other people. So that, I mean, this all sounds really powerful. And if you go to the show notes at transformativeprinciple.org, you can see what this, this car, student support card looks like and you can see a sample of it and I've I've got a link there to it. And I really like this because you talked about if the red is not full yet, then it's not a full ring. Then you start working on that. And did I understand that right? That you you start with the red and you move down from there to give them the proper supports. Is that right? We kind of start we we start with whichever colors are the strongest. With the strongest, thank you. Yeah, so if red was their strongest, that'd be a great place to start. Um, if it's not, then we start other places and and work towards that. And and you know, like I said, if I like if I were to sit down with one of my students at my school and I saw that their red was very small, if I'm connected enough with them, I could start that conversation. If I'm not connected enough with them, I really don't. It, it really wouldn't be a productive conversation for me to start with them until I am more connected with them. And Amy, this is like. This is not rocket science, right? And no. we all know the kids that we have a poor relationship with. Mm -hmm. If we start talking to them about how their life should be or whatnot, <laughs> they're not going to give us the time of day. And, and being able to have a framework for talking about it, I think, is so powerful. And so if it's somebody that I've got a great relationship with, then, yeah, I could talk about that. Doesn't mean I have to, but I could. And if I don't have a great relationship, then... It's a waste of time, right? Yeah, exactly. And you know, one thing we've really noticed in our schools that have been teaching this framework for quite some time is that if there's a kid in our district who's struggling and, you know, I'm technically the school counselor kind of, right? And a teacher might call me and say, hey, will you fly out to the school and go talk to this kid? It used to be that they would ask me to go out there. And now what they say is, Amy, who's connected to that kid? Who could we get to go out there and support that kid? Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> right? So it's a, it's a different conversation. It's not about, oh, just because you're the counselor, you should go take care of it. We know that doesn't work, right? It's not a good model. Yeah. Can, can I support that person going and working with that kid? Absolutely. But am I necessarily the right person? Not always. Yeah. And so as we're, we're thinking about this, there are many different ways to provide that support. But how do you get kids to buy into it in the first place? Because <laughs> that 
sounds like a town. So let's talk about that. That's a really good question. And that leads us into talking about Flight Club. So Flight Club is super fun. Kids come to Flight Club the first time because it's fun. They don't come because, I, I, I shouldn't say nobody, but typically they don't come because they're looking to add anchors or thicken their web of support. Typically they come because their friends are coming and we do all kinds of experiential activities. You know, we do trust falls. We pick people up and fly them around the gym like Superman flying. We um, do the electric fence where everybody's inside and they all have to get outside by going over the fence. You know, so lots of fun experiential activities. We sleep on the floor of the gym. We have a dance, whatever food we can find because teenagers are starving all the time. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just a real bonding kind of activity. So that's why they come the first time, because it's fun. And everybody's like, oh, let's go to Flight Club. It's really fun. We find that they do their surveys the first time, and they're, um, it's kind of overreported, like more anchors. more You know, their webs look super strong the first time. And then the next time they come, and we have them twice a year. We have one in the fall and one in the spring. The next time they come, we find that they're – Kaleidos their kaleidoscope snapshot has less color in it. They're learning the concepts the second time. So, so really the enticing to come is how much fun it is. And then when they see the value, they really do see the value and they, they connect with the adults that come to flight club first. I mean, they might be connected to other people too, but they always connect to the adults that come to flight club because we're all doing the same thing. You know, if a kid's doing a trust fall off a bleacher into a group of kids, so am I, right? Everybody does the activities. So there's a ton of connection that builds there and they start to see the value of connecting with adults and of trusting adults to help them build their webs of support. And so are those 20 adults to 70 kids, are those 20 adults there to be those anchors or are they just there to support the process? Both. And it's interesting because sometimes it's hard to get adults to come to those kinds of activities and we have a teacher in our school district who was new to our school district and came to flight club first thing in August, maybe early September, her first year here. And she will tell you hands down that the reason that she stayed in this district was because of flight club. She connected with kids. She connected with other adults. She felt like she had a common language with all of us. She teaches on a remote site. There's only two teachers and 25 kids or something. So the adults that come, they, they, You know, we require adults to come because that's the whole idea, right? Kids connecting with adults. But when the adults come, they learn and see the value just like the kids do. And it helps them then when they go back to their school sites to understand how to connect better with kids who didn't come to Flight Club. We expect them to um, participate as much as their bodies will allow them. (laughs) Yeah, that's certainly interesting. And those teachers from rural sites will come in for this with their kids. And so that, that helps them provide a, build a bond and become anchors for them. But then do you have people that aren't at that rural site that participate in the flight club as well? Absolutely. And we have parents that come. We have one of our partners in the grant is the local mental health organization and they send adults to it. Our superintendent comes, um, community members sometimes come. They don't typically stay the whole time, but they drop in for chunks of time. And uh, this year, actually, we've changed. We have an application process for kids to come, and we don't turn kids away, but we just have to have, you know, permissions and those kind of things for the application process. And um, we've added a page to the application process for them, for the kids to individually invite adults to come, because it would be perfect if we had, like, one adult at one kid, right? That would be, like, a beautiful picture. So we're trying to increase, although we have pretty good adult participation here, but um, we're always trying to increase it. Sure. So what does it take for someone who's listening to this and we've got listeners all over the all over the world listening? What does it take for them to start implementing some of these things in their schools? Yeah, well, we can come and do staff trainings at schools if people are interested. We can do flight clubs without the staff training, although I, I do think that having the staff training first helps with kind of the systemic implementation of things because your staff then knows what the kids are talking about. But the best way to do it would be to go to Brightways Learning's website and send an email or send an email to me and I could put you in the right direction and we could start a discussion about what might be useful at your school or at your district and um, go from there. 
Okay. Well, well, that sounds great. And I will put a link to Brightways Learning in the show notes at transformativeprinciple.org slash episode 230. So you can go find that easily. And that will be a great, great thing for you to do. So Amy, can in closing, can you just share uh, one or two stories of powerful impacts that have been had because of Flight Club and, and teaching kids how to about all of this web of support? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, typically people often think that events like this and frameworks like this are only for what we would say small balloons, but we had a, a girl come to one of our flight clubs. She's a huge balloon balloon. She has many anchors, lots of strings. Her web is very thick. She's a very big balloon. And she was a senior in high school and she went back to her high school after coming to flight club and she's told her principal that her principal needed to change the way she was thinking because flight club was really for everybody, not just for troubled kids. And then um, her name's Jill. She went on to college and it was kind of a scary transition for her and kind of, you know, move away from her whole web, right? We live in a pretty small rural community, moved away from her web and went to college. And she sent me a, um, an email after her first set of finals. And she said, Amy, I was so worried about my finals. She said, I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I was crying. I didn't know what to do. And one of the things I forgot to mention this, one of the things we do at flight club is we have index cards and you get an index card for every other person that's at flight club. And during the time you're there, you learn something about them and you write two positive comments about them on their card. So everybody leaves what we, what we call their stack. So Jill says to me, I was so worried about my finals, like sick to my stomach, you know, and I knew that wasn't a good way to go into them. And she said, I pulled out my stack from Flight Club and I read my cards. And she said, I went into my finals the next day, she said, and I did really well, like boosted my confidence, told me who I really was as a person that, that I was forgetting, right? That all these things that other people saw in me that I was forgetting. Um, so that was a pretty powerful story. That stack was that powerful to her. Yeah. And that she kept it all that time. And, and, she kept, yeah. oh, and kids keep them. I'm telling you, Jethro, they keep them. I There's a student in a community down the road and she, the inside of her bedroom door is plastered. She's been to nine flight clubs, I think, plastered with her stacks. Another one keeps them on the inside of her locker. Another one I know keeps them in their backpack. You know, they just, they keep them. Yeah, that just sounds awesome, man. Uh, Amy, thank you so much for sharing all this uh, with us. And I hope those of you who are listening that if you have some ideas about some of the ways that you can help build your kids up, you'll check out Bright Ways Learning and be able to implement some of these things and hopefully get a flight club at your school and really find a way to build those webs of supports for students. So Amy, thank you again so much for being part of Transformative Principle. Yeah, thank you very much. It was fun.